Having set up my while loop, it's now time for me to start building the code to process the answer that the user is providing. Now in this context, there are really three scenarios that come up. One is that the user, you know, guesses a number. The guess number is larger than the chosen number. The guess number is smaller than the chosen number. Or let's say the guess number is equal to the chosen number. Now, what we can do is to write separate if conditions to handle each one of these one by one. And that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, before that, however, what we'll also do is that we'll keep track of how many attempts a user has made. So I'm going to create a variable called, say, attempts. Now, uh, this is an integer. So I just, you know, say start with zero. Uh, when the game starts and every time the user makes a guess, which is basically every time the user clicks and enter on this statement, I just go and increase attempts to, let's say, attempts, uh, you know, plus one. Now, recall that this kind of statement is basically saying change attempts by one. Uh, you know, and which means increase attempts by one, which is logical. Like I said, the first condition that we look at is that the guess number is larger than the chosen number. So I just put a condition here that if guess is greater than n, now recall there must be a colon over here, an indentation is created with respect to this if, uh, and I say, okay, look, print, for example, uh, my number is smaller than that. And I can give a, you know, let's say uh, an extra backslash in here. Now, notice here that I must be indenting my if uh, from the while because otherwise it's not part of the while loop. We'll see this is kind of very interesting consequences, but we'll see this later. Now, since I want to put another if loop, I want to put another if condition here, sorry. I'm going to make sure that it aligns with this if. That's why I've given an enter on line number 17. And that's basically the second condition where I say if guess is, say, less than n. Notice here, I have to be careful to indent this thing. And I say if guess is, let's say, less than n, then I just say my number is, say, larger, g, larger than, you know, uh, than that. And finally, again, I indent this. I say, okay, if guess is, say, equal to n. Now, I must have double equal to here because we're checking for equality. I say print uh, you know, bingo, bingo, that is correct, um, say, and I can also tell my player how long, I mean, how many attempts uh, was taken to make this guess, so I say print, say, uh, you know, you took, say, um, you know, come on, attempts, To guess this. Okay, so you do, so yeah, you took the attempts to guess this. At this point, however, I must make sure, and this is very, very important. We'll look at this again later. I must make sure my done is equal to true because if I did not do this, my loop is not going to end at all. As we saw earlier, this loop will keep running while the condition not done is true, which means while the condition done is false. And if I do not do this statement line 23, then my loop is not going to end at all. But now with this conditions done, look at the indentation carefully. I've got while all the ifs are aligned indented with respect to the while and everything inside these, each of these ifs is again indented because this if condition is these two lines, this if condition is these two lines. And finally, this if condition is these three lines. And with this, in fact, my game is in good shape. If I run this now, I can see what's going on here. So I come in here, it says, guess the number, I say 12. My number says larger than that. So I say, for example, 34. Smaller than that, so it's between 12 and 34. I say, try, try maybe 22 is larger than that. So I know it's between 22 and 34. Let's try 27 maybe. Larger than that, I say, try 30. And smaller than that, so now it's, it's either 28 or 29. So I say 28, and that happens to be correct. In this case, it was not bad. I took six attempts to get there. Notice that because my done has become true, now if you look at done at this point of time, it is true because eventually this condition came in and done became true, which means that not done is clearly false and hence this while loop has exited. If I had forgotten to do this statement, however, while loop wouldn't have exited. Again, the important bit here is to make sure that, you know, we indent it all correctly and we understand what's going on with respect to every condition. Not very hard, but go in a systematic manner so that things become clear. If this way of learning appeals to you, building activities, learning concepts through those activities, look at our website because there's a lot of material that may be of interest to you. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.